Welcome to What's Left, a weekly political discussion challenging the mainstream left. We are online at whatsleftpodcast.com. You can find the link to our blog in the episode notes. Please subscribe, rate, review, turn on your notifications, and share your favorite episode. Jot down our information wherever you found this episode. My name is Andy Lipson. I'm a socialist and teacher in Oakland. And we are joined again by Kenny, a socialist in Central Valley, right? <laughs> um, and as people can see, well, we don't have Eduardo, but in his stead is Jessica returning for just one episode. Don't get used to this, folks. She's just back for one episode, <laughs> but she's back. So, uh, <laughs> <Still> my shit. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back, Jessica. Thank you. It's good to see you guys. Yeah. And um, we're going to get an update on some of the things you're doing, um, in particular, uh, your your tincture um, pursuit and tincture business or apothecary. Um, but is there anything you can just tell us, like, because like, a bunch of people have already said, like, I've seen comments on episodes. Where's Jessica? We miss Jessica. Da, 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 da. And um, so I think you're going to need to, like, fill people in a little bit about what you've been up to. Um, and then we'll get to business. I, I've just got a lot going on this fall. I don't want to say too much, but just a lot of like potential changes coming next year that, yeah, I've just been really busy. So it's been, I've missed you guys, but I think it's also been good to have a little okay. bit of time. And oh, okay. yeah. And I know that you are, you have some things you're trying to like really change and this is time this is time you've needed to really focus on the some of the changes you're hoping to make in your life correct yeah and i think most of those changes are not actually going to happen until next year but right now is kind of like the work time so yeah yeah place of living and career and everything just okay. everything so it's it's been working the way you you were hoping yeah i think okay. so um and have you have you still been able to check out some of our episodes yeah, I think I've listened to all of them that have aired. Great, great. I even left comments, I think, on a couple of them. <laughs> all right, great. I'm not sure, maybe I missed that, but I'll see. Um, Probably and, got flat. <laughs> so, so I guess we'll 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 go from where you had sent me a link to a new kind of business you're starting. Um, I know you you have you're you're in the business of doing um, readings, right? Like a uh, Astrology. Astrological mm -hmm. readings. But you started something very new that's actually related to, uh, you know, some of the gifts you gave us. Like you gave me and Randy a set of tinctures, um, which I brought here. I want to show people these things. Uh, uh, They're the OG. Um, <laughs> a, pine, a pine needle tincture. All right. Which I may, I'm going to ask you about these again. A uh, yarrow tincture. Okay. I don't, you're going to be able to see the name. And um, ocean spray flower essence tincture. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe that's not a tincture. Maybe that's an essence. That is a flower essence. Yeah. Um, so that was something. And I think, Kenny, you you and Crystal got something as well, correct? We definitely got some. You know, yeah. Thank you. For that. So you guys were basically my clinical trial. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, I am, if I am Pfizer, you guys. <laughs> Are like the VIP first round of the vaccines. Not these, even for the these are ninety five percent effective. <laughs> safe and effective, a hundred percent safe and effective. We, we are the testimonials, right? For your <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, but little did I know that you you had an idea about actually starting a whole brand and business around your production of essences and tinctures and things like that. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm a full-time college professor and a yoga teacher and an astrologer. I don't have enough jobs, so I should get another one. <laughs> no, that's not really it. But um, yeah, do you want me to just talk yeah. about how it emerged? Yeah. Yeah, so, well, I've been in the whole, I mean, I think people who have listened to this show have if you've listened to any episodes where I couldn't talk about my backstory, then you'll know, like I've kind of been into holistic health for a while, like maybe since 20, I don't know, like 15 ish. Um, so I was always like using 
herbal supplements and stuff like that. And I knew a, a lot about like the properties and how I incorporated them, but I was never on the like growing food, growing herbs, making them myself uh, end of things until I moved out here to more of a rural area, you know, a couple of years ago now. And it was kind of one of the ways that I decided I was going to like create a relationship with the land and learn about the land here, like literally the land, <laughs> like the environment. Um, yeah. And we like, we have a vegetable garden and we have some, like we had some herbs already growing in our backyard. My landlady is like very into organic gardening and stuff like that. And so we kind of have a shared between like the three households that live on this like set of property. Um, yeah, we had like more food than I'd ever grown in my life. Um, and then the little herb garden as well. So at first it was just for fun. Like I was just kind of messing around with stuff in my garden. And then I started also kind of, um, like going on hikes with my dog and stuff like that and starting to learn, you know, just different plants. Um, just like one at a time, you know, I got like a book of herbs and stuff like that and it was just kind of a natural progression that I started making medicines with them just for myself just to kind of see how it would be and just really fell in love like I love I just loved working especially with herbs in particular um I don't know it's just like a really magical experience and go ahead yeah what was the first one what was the first one you made? First one I made. Oh, that's a good question. I can't remember the first one I made, but I think a couple of the first herbs that I started working with were red raspberry leaf, lemon balm. I think those are probably the first two, just because we have like a, a kind of an abundance of them here. And when you're making when you're making your first tinctures at this point, correct? Is that yeah, I started with tinctures because honestly, they're really easy to so, make. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, yeah. maybe explain what a tincture is because I don't think everyone knows. Uh, yeah, so a tincture, um, yeah, that's what I started with. And all you really need to do a tincture, like in, in its most basic form, of course, there's different ways to do it, but um, is alcohol and your herb. That, a basic tincture, that's literally all you need. And and a jar, I guess, like a clean, you know, sanitized jar with a tight fitting lid. And all you do is you use the alcohol as uh, an extracting uh, material. So over this band of, and it depends on the herb and your preference, but over this band of like four to six weeks, you, you know, you put the herb in alcohol, you want like 80 or 100 proof. Um, and alcohol will extract medicinal properties in a fairly concentrated form. And then you strain it and you have a tincture. And that is a basic tincture. You, there are other ways to do it and variations on that, um, you know, additives and stuff like that. But yeah, that's all you need. Like, it's really easy. Everybody should try it. <laughs> now, this tincture, this is yarrow tincture. This doesn't smell like alcohol. Probably smells a little like alcohol because that one doesn't have any. I think that one's just straight. But yeah, the people, I think a lot of people kind of have, because if you look at the ingredient label on a tincture, it's going to basically say alcohol and then whatever the herb is. And um, I think people kind of are scared of alcohol in our culture. So the amount of alcohol in one like dose, so like one dropper full a dose i mean it depends on you know your like a child dose would be smaller but you know one to two droppers is sort of like a typical dose um it has about the same amount of alcohol content as a ripe banana or a ripe piece of fruit um so that's why like especially around kids especially around like pregnant women breastfeeding women I think there's sometimes like some fear of like, oh my God, it has alcohol in it. It's not like you're drinking like a whiskey or something if you take one dose. 
Um, but yeah. And then there's like, you know, like an elixir is usually, um, like a typical elixir would be a tincture that also has like something like honey added to it, um, for taste. And then also honey obviously has medicinal benefits. So there's different kind of things you can do. I feel like that's that, that is that one that you have, Andy is, I believe just alcohol and okay. RO. So I feel like it smells a little like alcohol, but yeah, it's not, you're not smelling like a bourbon or something. Yeah. I'm smelling mostly the yarrow then. Yeah, probably. Yeah. It's it's definitely- weird. Yarrow is a bit, is in the bitter family. So, um, that's one reason I don't sweeten yarrow. Like it probably, that tincture know, to me, a plain yarrow t- tincture doesn't taste like particularly good, yeah. but because it's a bitter, it has like particular properties. If you have like before a meal, it's going to get your, you know, your gut bacteria going, um, or after a meal. So it's going to help with digestion. So with something like that, I wouldn't necessarily want to, um, add honey or anything else, but anyway, I'm getting like way into (laughs) specifics, but. Well, no, that's what, but, uh, and did you first, learn about this by like reading about it do you go online was it just something that did did you look into this area of tinctures and elixirs before you started walking around or it kind of came as a result of being in the grand well i had taken tinctures before like i'd had i'd taken holistic su- supplements including tinctures you know off and on for years for like different different things um and yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's not like I just like woke up one day and was like, God has spoken to me. I must make a tincture today. But I don't know. It's just like, I, I guess I do follow a fair amount of herbalists like online. I had a few women like in my life, like in women's circles that I encountered and stuff that were herbalists. And yeah, I just kind of like alongside exploring more like self-sufficiency and like learning to grow vegetables and stuff like that it just kind of I don't know I guess occurred to me as part of that process Mm -hmm. um and then once I started doing it I just really enjoyed it not that I don't enjoy gardening but I don't know there's just something really cool about working with the herbs Mm -hmm. and then you were trap you probably were you using some of these as well Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. At first I was just making them literally for myself only, like only for myself. Um, Nate's not into any of this stuff. <laughs> He's like, no, thank you. Like, Maybe I'll sneak one into his like smoothie or something. But um, yeah, I was just literally making them for myself. And then it's surprising like how much you can make in, you know, your kitchen <laughs> and with like the stuff in your backyard or in your like surrounding area and so then it started to become like okay I I was like you know testing them or whatever on myself to make sure that you know um, my head didn't explode or I didn't vomit or something you know something I mean it's it's pretty low risk I mean with those sorts of ingredients I mean obviously there's always I guess a small risk of like bacteria and stuff like that so you have to make sure that you're keeping things super sanitary um but yeah I felt like they were helping me. And so then I started bottling them up and, you know, like giving them to gifts, like I did to you guys and family and friends and stuff and saying like, Oh, Hey, you want to try this? Like just kind of, um, partly cause I had more than I could ever, I mean, they're very concentrated. Um, and I'm not somebody who wants to take like, you know, 18 different tinctures a day. Like I'm actually pretty minimalist in like the amount of stuff I take, even holistic stuff on a daily basis. Um, so yeah, I just started kind of gifting them to different people and, and then getting feedback and hearing if they liked them, which a lot of people did. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then people started, it was kind of like early this year that a lot of people started saying like, we should sell this. Um, and at first I was like, no, 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 no. Like that would like take the magic out of it. I would never want to do that. Like too much stress no thanks but like enough people kept saying like like I would buy this like you really should you know create a little at least a little like side business you know something low kind of low stakes and low like you're making it anyway 
Um, and by this time I was making hydrosols and flower essences. Um, so had like a little range of <laughs> different things that I had, you know, kind of tested out and felt pretty comfortable with. Um, yeah. So the summer was when I first started like actually considering, okay, maybe I could open a little, little mini apothecary of some kind. And, and I want, I want you to show us that website that you should, that you showed us the link to. Um, but do you have, like you, you can probably do almost a personal testimonial to, to some of the things you've used and that have really maybe made a difference. Can you say something about those? Yeah. Um, probably the most, probably like, I don't want to see my, I feel like herbalists are not supposed to have like a favorite herb, kind of like teachers aren't supposed to have favorite students. But one of my favorite herbs that I, I work with is lemon balm. Um, and that's probably, as far as tinctures go, that's probably like the one that I take the most. I don't know. I mean, there's so many amazing medicinal properties. It's neuroprotective. Um, it can boost your mood and your memory. It can help with anxiety. Um, yeah, like the literally the, the list is like this long of medicinal properties. But a lot of this work and kind of what I like the magic of it to me is all energy work right? Like plants have different kind of energies, different vibes. And for me, I don't know what it is, if it's my personality or I don't know, there's just something about it that it, it just like embodies such a joyful energy. And, and it also grows like in my experience, it just grows so abundantly. It's very easy to grow. Um, you know, there's certain herbs that you have to be like if you're out wild crafting. So like if I go out like on a hike and I'm going to wild craft um, herbs that are not, you know, not on my property, then you want to have researched and you want to be responsible, responsible about it. And, you know, obviously like a lot of people are familiar with kind of like indigenous uh, perspectives in terms of like um, not taking more than like not, you don't want to take more than it's going to damage the plant you want to know if something's like endangered you want to know you want to have a really clear sense of um the herb but man the lemon balm in my backyard like I just like there's no I there's no scarcity mindset <laughs> scarcity mindset's like one of the things I've been working on this year and there's there's just nothing of that energy with that plant um yeah it just it's like I don't know you can't not be happy when you work with it and it smells so good. I love like, so it's called lemon balm because it kind of smells and has like a, a citrusy sort of flavor. Like you can eat the, the leaves. Mm. Um, so I'll, I'll make like a, it's kind of like mint, um, but it's like a little, has a little bit more of a citrusy. So it's great for um, like uh, mixed drinks. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Uh, like you can do like a lemon balm mojito, you know, instead of mint or alongside mint, or you can put it in, um, what do you call it? Uh, tabbouleh, stuff like that. So I'll use it in cooking and drinks and stuff too. Um, but yeah, I love, I love just like the taste of it, the smell of it. I love citrus just, just anyway. So yeah, I don't know. It just makes me happy when I feel like I need some uplifting. I take my lemon balm. Now I make an elixir usually. I add honey to it. And it's sort of like, you know, I, I think I actually do a microimmune. I mean, to me, that's a tincture as well. Uh, each day, this was something a, a Tibetan herbalist had suggested to me, and also a particular set of multivitamins. Same sort of thing. You have a tincture that you might take once in the morning, or uh, is there a frequency that, that with these things? Do they have different frequencies when when you're taking them? Um. Yeah. I mean, a, a sort of standard dose is like one to two droppers for an adult, and. I'd say like two to three times a day. I mean, it's going to depend on the herb. It's not like pharmaceuticals where you need to necessarily worry that you're going to like overdose. So yeah, I mean, there's not, I, I don't, I think you'd have to like drink a couple of bottles <laughs> to even like, you know, feel any 
any like negative side effects, but that said, I mean, it's everybody's body is different. Like I actually find that I, um, tend to like need a little bit more to really feel an effect. Like if I take one dropper of most tinctures, I don't know. I don't, I don't really notice much of a difference. Um, and tinctures you are, you are taking, you know, for medicinal purposes, which is different than we can talk about like the flower essences, um, which is much more sort of like an energy medicine, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I know like redheads t- tend to need, uh, like higher doses of painkillers apparently in like surgeries and stuff and higher like amounts of, uh, like laughing gas. They always had to give me like a really high dose if I had a cavity mm. as a kid. So I don't know if that's the same physical mechanism. Um, but yeah, I mean, I always just encourage people like take a half dropper or a dropper, see how you feel. And then maybe the next day take two droppers. Um, and it also depends on like what you're taking it for. You might want to take something short term, like for two weeks, you know, maybe you have a specific goal or there's some sort of health, um, reason that you're taking it, or you might just be taking it kind of like preventatively or sporadically. It's just going to depend on what the medicine is and what your intention is with it. But there's just like, there's so, I don't know, there's such like fear mongering with so much of medicine, you know, like overdosing and doses and stuff like that. And that, that's one thing I love about, you know, more holistic, um, like natural products. It's like, you're not going to overdose on lemon balm. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, there very little risk, you know, worst case scenario, it just it doesn't help. Yeah. So you mentioned joy, you know, and pleasure in doing this stuff. And so I'm curious as to, you know, going into creating your own business, like, do you have any concerns? you know, about like losing that joy and like, how is that going for you at the moment? Yes, a hundred percent. I had concerns. So I never, um, there was never really a point where I was like, had any doubts about the quality of the products I was making or like the benefits of the plants themselves. Like that from the get go, I 100% believed in the integrity of that what were the biggest hang-ups for me in terms of actually trying to start a little business was all the other shit like attaching financial value to I mean just the like the list so monetizing stuff dealing with prices dealing with shipping dealing with packaging uh marketing dealing with um graphic design uh, like labels, websites, to all of that shit. I had a story in my head that was like, I don't enjoy any of that stuff. I'm not good at any of that stuff. And therefore, I'm not going to take this any further than like a masking tape label, like, the, you know, like I gave you guys, um, which I love. I still love all of, all of my stuff that I use myself, like has a masking tape old school label. Like I don't give a shit about the aesthetics, but when you're marketing a business, obviously you need to have certain things like that. And that was, yeah, that stuff was what held me up for the longest time. Um, and I really had to just kind of have like a total mindset switch of like, well, what if instead of just constantly telling myself, well, I can't, I suck at graphic design. I can't do this. What if I approached it with a little bit more open-mindedness, a little bit more of a playful spirit, uh, and worst case scenario, I don't sell a single product and it's not fun. And then I can stop doing it. It's not, you know, it's, it's a pretty low stakes thing for me. I mean, there is a little bit of investment in terms of like materials and obviously time. Um, but yeah, I'm like quite proud of myself that I, like, I think my labels actually look pretty good. I, I'll show you guys the the website and stuff. But um, yeah, it's like, I don't know, once you started attaching money to something too, I mean, I think I brought this up in one of the last episodes I did on what's left of like, one of the things I'm trying to work on is changing my mentality around money, which has always been like, money is bad. <laughs> if I had even a penny, <laughs> I'm, I'm bad. Mm-hmm. Um, So yeah, I think it's been a good exercise for me to like, you know, attach, like, like charge for something. Um, it's a good product. Like it's worth 
you know, I mean, I guess it's worth what people will pay for it, but, um, yeah. And it's, I mean, especially having learned very, in a very like amateur and fairly fast way, like having learned how to make a label and like how to like all the stuff that goes into shipping and all, all of that, like business stuff. Um, it definitely give has given me a really immense <laughs> like appreciation for mm-hmm. small businesses and people who, you know, just like run, run their, their shit. And you're, I mean, it's like such an array of skills that it takes just for something so small. Like right now I have eight products available. Yeah. yeah. And, and that was that personal potluck episode where we were kind of talking about our own kind of trials around certain things. And that's the one you brought up. You were even a little reluctant at the time um, in, during that episode. And so when you, when you were talking about some of that, holding yourself back, it's all these things. It's like even the, the idea of selling something and marketing, those were also part of that entire, you know, uh, set of things that, that, that you were kind of saying, no, that's not me. Am I right about that? Yeah. And that's, totally. and you're, and you're now going like, well, no, I can do this and I'm, I'm, I'm able to do this. Uh, and so you're kind of, you, you've, you've really struck out in that direction, basically. I'm trying. I mean, I still. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you're I doing have my moment. So um, maybe yeah. you should show us uh, your, your website and just talk about it. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, I don't even have my own own website I should say so most of the marketing that I've done has been through Instagram where I only have like a small amount of followers but um that's where I've kind of done the promotion for it and then um where that the where the products are actually available is on Etsy um which is the whole thing um yeah I I decided I didn't like obviously you can start your own website I do have my own website actually for astrology um, but that's a little bit different because I'm not selling like physical products. Mm. Uh, so I decided, okay, I'll just, I'll do it through Etsy. There's obviously certain downsides to that in the sense that they take like a small cut. It's less than you'd think. Um, but there's certain things you don't have to deal with, like paying for your own website, uh, keeping that once you start to hopefully get, um, more customers and they may leave reviews, then it helps, you know, with sort of like an algorithm. So that's what I decided to do to start out just to kind of test the waters and not necessarily commit to like running a whole website. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, let me open a new tab. So yeah, this is just my little Etsy site. Um, free folk apothecary, by the way, is the name that I gave to my little business. Do you want me to say why? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of has a double meaning. One, it's an odd to folk herbalism, which mm-hmm. is kind of like a genre of herbalism. Um, so it's kind of a nod to like all the herbalists that have come before me. Um, just very humbling to kind of like think of yourself in a line of like ancestors or healers um, that have been been practicing these methods for like literally centuries. Um, so it's kind of cool in that sense. Um, and then also free folk as in like free people and sort of freeing yourself from systems, whether it be medical industrial complex or even just this idea that you have to like outsource your health at all like we can make our own medicine I mean not everybody necessarily wants to make their own medicines if you don't want to make your own medicines you can buy them from people people like me but this idea that you know as communities like we can sustain ourselves and we don't necessarily have to be reliant on the powers that be to survive and thrive and apothecary Mm -hmm. is somebody who is that is that the word from somebody who makes elixirs and tinctures well apothecary just is it's more of like um like a traditional word for like a a medicine shop but it's you know it's usually been used to refer to um 
like holistic, like plant medicines. Um, some people would probably say it has a bit of a like witchy, witchy vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's like, I, you know, I guess it's like the more holistic version of like chemist or pharmacy, but obviously that's not what I'm doing. So, yeah. And, yeah. oh, go ahead. No, it's just, uh, like, it's, it's just interesting when you talk about um, like ancestors and lineage, it just came up to my mind that my, my grandma actually had a mixture of alcohol and marijuana that she would always rub her, you know, on her body. And like, she, she just had that like always laying around and it was like second nature. So it's, it's something that's been around and, I guess, like, yeah. it's, it's just somehow, like, erased that on my mind as I went to school and stuff, but. Uh. Yeah, well, and I feel like a lot of our, like, grandmas or great-grandmas, like, okay, apothecary, people think of, like, an actual, like, shop, you know, like, the corner shop where, you know, the local witch sells all her potions and things, but, it, I mean, I often refer to, like, my kitchen apothecary, right, because, like, I just, I don't have, like, studio space or anything like that like I just make this stuff in my kitchen um and yeah I feel like all of our like so many of our grandmas had apothecaries which they probably didn't even refer to that way but it was just normal to have like a bunch of jars you know for all of these different medicinal purposes hmm. um and and also just like the knowledge and especially those you know in a lot of cultures it did tend to be like older wis um older women um who would like carry this wisdom forward um so yeah i i dream of having just like my own like big like walk-in pantry just full of like <laughs> just everything jars and bottles and all kinds of stuff and can you say more about the little design that's with the free folk like you got this little butterfly then these plants kind of coming down, but then there's one plant that doesn't have plants on it. Like, what's going on there? Did you design that? Yeah, this is just my very immature. No, it's crop. cool though. Thanks. Anything yeah. you can say about it? Uh, no, I mean, I just tried to keep it pretty basic for that, but I'll show you guys like, um, I don't know how to get rid of this like side thing, but, um, yeah, I'll show you like, so like this is my lemon balm tincture. Um, so you can kind of see like, this is basically the label. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see the. And did again, you draw the, that or? Yeah. No, I designed this on um, a program called Canva. So. Um, yeah, I'll show you like another. Label. I see that you made like a disclaimer. Like, uh, is that something that you have to deal with too? Like legality issues, you know? Yes. So you technically, it's so funny because, well, it's not funny, but the whole supplement industry is completely unregulated. I mean, if you go on Amazon to buy supplements, even if you go to like Whole Foods, I mean, a lot of people have no idea what the fuck is in <laughs> some of these products. Um, but yeah, so legally you have to put, um, a disclaimer, a lot of herbalists don't, I will say that, but just to cover my bases, I, yeah, I put the FDA statement. So, um, these statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. That first two sentences is the pretty much, um, word for word, the FDA disclaimer, um, and then, yeah, the the second half of it's kind of my little spin. Different herbalists do their own thing. Um, you know, this I've heard lots of different versions of this, but yeah, I just said consult a health professional at your own discretion. Mm -hmm. Exercise autonomy over your own health. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. I love how you uh, open ended the health professional is like you're not saying talk to your doctor uh, and. The whole autonomy over your body, like it's just shows the, you know your mindset because we've been discussing you know all that right in the show about autonomy and taking control of our own uh, health and body. So I think that's beautiful. But a lot, like a lot of herbalists will put like you know consult your physician or like you know consult your health professional um, before like 
whatever, you know, just to kind of cover their bases, which, yeah, I just kind of wanted to say that, but also say it in a way that was still like in integrity because this whole business, like, I don't want to be doing it if I'm, you know, spouting FDA talking points. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, that was my attempt to kind of do the disclaimer, but do it in a way that was still um, authentic to me. So sorry, I have another question, I guess, uh, the whole batch number, because, you know, I'm in the industrial food production stuff. And so, you know, we have to do stuff like that. So how did you how did you decide to do that? Or is that also something you have to do when you produce this stuff? No, you don't have to do that. Um, I don't think so. Anyway, it, that's just for me to like keep track on my own end. Um, of you know how many products I'm producing in any given batch of a product. I mean, right now, like there's not that many batches, so that's not that hard to keep track of. But you know, if I keep making this stuff, like I think it's just good as a uh, general practice to just be keeping track of your stuff, like more than just like how many you have in stock and. Um, not that there would ever be an issue, but if, if there were ever an issue, you know, I think it's important to know like, okay, how many people did this batch go out to and to whom? So, um, yeah, I'm, I've got, you know, my little system of keeping track of everything. It's obviously blank on here, but if you receive a product, it will have the batch number. Um, and then, um, expiration date as well. So tinctures, you know, well, most horrible products, but, um, they're interesting in the sense that like they don't really go bad uh, unless they're improperly stored, in which case you could, if you have like a lot of air getting into them, you, you could have bacteria grow. Um, that would be the only thing, but they don't actually like expire in the way that a lot of more industrially produced food and supplement products do. They, they just start to lose potency. Um, and tinctures are amazing. Like tinctures don't really start to lose potency. I mean, I've heard ever, anything from like, three to like all the way up to like seven or eight years. Um, so when I, when I put the like expiration dates or like the routines full potency, I usually err on kind of like the lower end, just, I don't know, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they're really cool. Like they, they're still good. They're not, they don't really ever go bad. Um, especially they're alcohol based. So yeah, that's another really cool thing is like, you know, you can buy a tincture and then like have it in your cupboard and not worry about it like going off for literally years on end, you know, as long as you're not just like opening it and leaving it like baking in the sun or something. Um, it's gonna last a really long time. So do you wanna walk us through? Cause I imagine you you yourself have probably made more than eight things. I don't um mm-hmm. you must have made a choice about what you decided you wanted to um make available yeah well i i put i wanted to have um so yeah you can kind of see like my grouping say i have right now i have four tinctures and elixirs i kind of group together because they're similar types of products um and and then two hydrocells and two flower essences basically i picked the products that i have tested like the most uh robustly and that I felt really confident in the quality of them and, you know, had made sure that I like uh, tested them like on myself and multiple, you know, people and had done like multiple batches um, so that I could have, yeah, like a real, a real confident sense of like consistency. Yeah. I'm like always working on other stuff and I actually have a couple products that are probably going to be added uh, within the next month, but yeah, these are like my the ones that I wanted to launch with. And do you want to say something about them, like in terms of what they do and and what they are? Yeah, so I have. Um, Where there's a real style to uh, your labels, you actually have a style there. Yeah, I try. I'm like, you guys have no idea how bad at graphic design. <laughs> I'm like. I, I'm not saying these are like amazing, but like I am actually really proud of how cute yeah. they are. And they look really cute like in person too. Um, I was worried they were going to look like, you know, I designed them and everything. And then when I actually got them printed, I was like, oh, I hope they look cute in person. I was so excited when they got 
when they got here. And I only made like one typo or not typo, but like one little mistake, which wasn't um, too bad, but um, okay. Yes. So I have four tinctures or elixir elixirs. I have the lemon balm, um, which I already kind of talked about. Um, yeah, this is probably the one that I take the most. It's actually been the one that I've had the most sales on too, interestingly. I don't know what reason that is. Maybe it's because I talk about it nonstop. Um, but yeah, really amazing uh, for like anxiety, depression, um, kind of like mental focus. It's a really good one for kids too. Um, I know like moms who like put a little dose of lemon balm in their kid's water bottle before they send them off to school. Um, and then yeah, it's like neuro protective radio protective so if you're worried about like 5g and all that wi-fi electronic stuff that we're surrounded by all the time um and it's antiviral um yeah so that's the lemon balm um and that is an elixir so this is the one mistake i made on the labels is i don't know my brain was just like tincture 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 because i was mostly doing tinctures it does actually have honey in it so technically it is an elixir but probably mm. only herbalist notice that yep. um that the next batch will say uh elixir but mm -hmm. yeah that's the ingredients so all good um and then i have an echinacea tincture um echinacea is like bomb for this time of year it's like my number one if i feel like i'm coming down with a cold or a flu or the alleged covid um yeah and echinacea i mean it's really powerful it's a real it's like an immune boosting um has immune bo boosting properties so yeah the the best time to take it is like right as you feel all you're coming down with something um or like i don't know not that i i don't really believe in germ theory anymore but like recently nate uh, allegedly had covid and was like just you know, out for the cow and kind of like a flu, like flu, like symptoms and a bunch of other people around here. So I was like, I feel great, but I, I took echinacea for like a week or two. Um, just as kind of like a, you know, extra level of protection and I, know, I didn't get sick. So yeah, really, really amazing. Um, properties for that one. What other tinctures do I have? Yarrow. So I think. Oh, I sorry. To what? Going back to the um, echinacea, so that's one because I got I did actually get sick last week, and I remember on a Saturday I was starting to feel sick. That's when you would take it, like you were you're starting to feel something. Yeah, like the earlier the better. Yeah. Um, and echinacea is actually one of the few tinctures that I and most herbalists would not recommend taking for. Like I wouldn't recommend taking it just like indefinitely all winter because it, it really does like activate your immune system. Yeah. So it's one that I personally wouldn't take for longer than like a couple weeks. But yeah, the er the earlier you can take it, like you know, oh, a little scratchy throat, like hit the echinacea maybe like a drop or two a couple times a day for like a week or two weeks. Okay. So what are your reservations about taking it longer? Like. That's because I don't think it's wise to like keep your immune system in that like activated, like boosted state. I mean, it's not at the level of like, you know, pharmaceuticals again. Um, but the shit works like it legit like boosts your immune system. And so I don't I personally wouldn't recommend like just indefinitely taking something that's that powerful. Yeah. I don't want to people like scared of it like you're, you'll be fine but i just i wouldn't take it for like a whole season or anything like that right um it, it also i mean it has other uses besides like cold and flu that's the most common one but um if you get like a sting or any sort of like a bite um it has a, a really great like detoxing like blood i think i said on here yeah like blood blood purification um, you can even use it like topically, you can dilute it and do like a poultice if you have like a snake bite or something like that. So it's a really, it's a really good one to have kind of like in your little first aid kit. Yeah. Uh, what's GF vodka? Oh, gluten-free. Oh, okay. Because some people have some vodka, you know, they use uh, 
potatoes. Yeah. So some people prefer to just have that clarified. Yeah, and I should say like pretty much all of my ingredients that I use for everything is um either like I grow myself, so I like no, it's not sprayed with anything or um some stuff I'll get from like responsible wild crafting in my area or um we'll get from like local there is a, there are a few things that I get from local like farmers or um like lo- local sources where I like actually know the person so I'm like really really picky with um what I yeah what like just the quality of ingredients um cuz yeah that's like important to to me so I want to make sure it, that my products reflect that um yeah, yarrow. This is the one I think I had gifted you a one of the test batches of Andy. Um, yarrow's sick, dude. It's like, oh my god, you can use it for everything. You can kind of see the leaves in the back there. Um, yeah, it's great for immune health. It's great for like detoxing. It's a member of the bitters family. So um, anybody who wants some like digestive support, I would recommend taking it. Um, ideally, like thirty minutes, but honestly, I usually do it like two minutes before a meal. Um, this is just hard to remember. And you can kind of like let it sit on your tongue, which kind of activates um, all of those digestive like enzymes and bile and gets your kind of like preps your um, your gut to receive food. And you'll taste like the bitter flavor. So that's like what I was mentioning about how I don't add honey to this one. So uh, to me, like, because it has that um, bitters uh use it's yeah just better to keep it bitter keep the bitter bitter um you can also take bitters after a meal um to help if you especially if you get if you're prone to like bloating or I don't know sometimes I overeat by accident because I love food so much and yeah bitters are bitters are really helpful and there's a lot of different uh herbs in the bitters family but yarrow is one of them yeah, great for pain relief, antibacterial, all that good stuff. Um, that's CRL. Yarrow is like abundant in this area. I don't know about other parts of the country, but once like, it was one of the first, like, I, I never thought I was going to be able to like ID plants when I was a kid. I was always amazed at people who could be like, oh, that's the name of that flower. And that's the name of that plant. And I mean, there's still, I still have like, you know, probably 99% of plants to learn, but it is such a cool feeling when you can like be out for a hike with someone and be like, oh my gosh, this is that plant. <laughs> um, and Yar was like one of the first ones for me because it, it's everywhere here. Like once you, once you learn it and you start seeing it, you're like, oh, it's literally everywhere on the roadside and on hikes. And yeah, it has the little white flowers. Is, is, it, white and then or, the la- is it white or lavender? Um, you'll see lavender. There, it, there's different colors that it's been bred to. Like, actually, yeah, my landlady has some in the front of our house that's like, I think she has like purple and pink and I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you see it in the wild, it's usually white. Okay. The flowers, I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the last uh, tincture is dandelion. Um, oh my gosh. The dandelion wars. People think it's like, a weed and that it should be sprayed or trashed and it's it's such a powerful tool like even just the leaves you can chop them up put them in a salad they're natural bitters so many amazing properties um so yeah this is my dandelion tincture uh amazing for like your liver and just any sort of like detoxing um especially the root so this tincture has um not just like the aerial parts the leaves and the flowers but also the roots um which hold like the the most sort of concentrated medicinal benefits um yeah so just such a great tool like you can't go wrong with dandelion tincture in iceland man that was something i saw they just got so many dandelions running all over the place wild dandelions they they're they look a little bigger and hardier than our dandelions um and we got plenty of dandelions running around in our yard as well and I think about you. I think it's common in Europe to actually eat the leaves, like dandelion salad and stuff. But in the U.S., I mean, people get so mad 
when their dandelions start coming up, they're like, oh my God, I have to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm a little curious. A lot of this stuff doesn't grow all year round, does it? Uh, no, no. And there's there's often like certain times, like for instance, after like the first frost um, is a great time to dig up like the roots because all of the, I think how it works is that like all the, you know, sort of uh, medicinal stuff is like going back into the ground, right? Um, whereas obviously, yeah, you're not going to have like dandelions flowering in January like the flowers so yeah it's it is it is a very seasonal thing and like I'm sure my um production will be a lot especially for stuff like this will be uh pretty seasonal so yeah I don't think I'll have another dandelion tincture like once I run out of this batch probably until the spring um I might have other stuff because I'm working on some some other products but yeah it is it is very very much a seasonal process which is so cool because it's just another part of like you know kind of um embracing like a more natural way of living right I think even just like eating seasonally is like one of the best things people can do for their health um I don't know I always feel best it's you know like soups and potatoes and all that kind of you know canned stuff um in the winter and then summer I crave like fresh fruit and fresh vegetables and salads and stuff like who wants a salad in December like I think most people's bodies intuitively know like yes you want local seasonal food um so yeah so that's so, all the there's an elixirs sorry go ahead no no that just a seasonal thing like I, I've come to appreciate it um that's what I asked about you know this gross mm -hmm. all year because just recently um uh, I just started liking apples <laughs> Because they start giving me apples, in, you know, when it's, you're supposed to eat them. <laughs> yeah. Not, not all year round, they just, they just taste like water. And but, but just a little anecdote there. Yeah, we have an apple tree and I'm like, yeah, I've been making apple pies and stuff. And then I'll, I'm also um, making like applesauce and freezing it for like cakes and baked stuff for over the winter. Um, I did that last year and it was... It was awesome. So yeah, oh my God, so I thought this episode was going to be like 45 minutes, guys. <laughs> so, okay, the other two types of products, I'll try to be succinct. Um, I have two hydrosols. So hydrosol is all of the water-soluble constituents um, that you get through distilling. Um, I love <laughs> making hydrosol. I get like giddy I don't know the first time I made one I, I was like a fucking child like I was literally like jumping up and down in my kitchen like oh my god it's working it's working this has kind of become like one of my favorite types of products to make Nate actually got me this beautiful like copper alembic still like what you use to distill plant you you can make a hydrosol on your stovetop with like a pot and you can kind of make shift um so anybody can do it but oh my gosh it was like one of the coolest gifts anyone's given me um so yeah that's how I make my hydrosols is in my amazing uh copper distiller and yeah they're so cool you can use them for so many different things you can a lot of people use them for skincare, for hair care, you can mix them into really any type of personal hair or personal hair, personal care product. Um, you know, if you if you make like soaps, you want to mix it into your, you know, shampoo or conditioner or whatever. Um, and it has like all of these amazing properties in perfect balance. And these also are a really great alternative to essential oils, which I don't know. It's like a very controversial thing. I know a lot of people love essential oils. They are, in my opinion, a really unsustainable, like overly concentrated product. Um, I mean, if you just, I don't want to go too far into it right now but like if you look into like how essential oils are made especially with these like big companies like doTERRA and there's a million of them um and they're like especially in the yoga community people are just like essential oil crazy and i used to use all these uh 
natural, like totally natural products. And a lot of them would have essential oils in them and they would irritate my skin, especially if I have sensitive skin. Um, they can be really irritating. They're so concentrated. Um, and yeah, like they smell amazing, but you know, a lot of people have kind of like sensitivities to certain scents. So hydrocells are also a really great alternative if you're not super into essential oils. Like I actually will use them almost for like aromatherapy. You can put them in a, like a, um, um, what do you call it? A diffuser, you know, with water, if you want like a room to smell nice. Cause they oh. smell like the plant, they smell a lot more sort of subtle and earthy than essential oils. You're not going to get that like crazy pungent thing. And they don't, they also don't last as long. So, you know, if you're using, using them like a perfume or something, you're going to need to keep like reapplying. But, um, I use them sometimes even in my yoga classes or even in my yoga, like personal practice, I like to spritz my mat sometimes with a hydrosol one, cause it smells good. Some of them have antibacterial properties. Um, and then I'll even like, if I'm going to go around and do like hands-on assists during a yoga class, sometimes I'll, um, like spritz it on my hands, um, so that my hands kind of have like a good scent, but yeah, I don't, I don't use a lot of people do that, but with essential oils, uh, but I try to avoid essential oils. So yeah, I have two hydrosols. This is my, this is the hydrosol that I made. Like I was like, I am going to set out to create like the perfect hydrosol for me personally, like my dream hydrosol. Um, and this was the blend that I ended up concocting and then decided to launch as well as burn my business. So it's eucalyptus, aloe, uh, lemon balm, lime, and grapefruit. It is like the most just chill out, like cooling vibe. Um, you can even keep them in the fridge. Like if it's summer or it's like a hot day or maybe after a workout, if you want it to be like extra, um, cooling, but yeah, this is like, I will spritz my pillow before bed because eucalyptus is really amazing for like opening up the airways. And um, anytime I'm like having a shit day, I'm pissed off. Like I, I'm a, you know, double fire sign in Ayurveda. I'm a pitta. So I like run hot. I run hot tempered. I run like, I get angry, I get frustrated. And to me like this, I mean, it's literally cooling, but it also like eucalyptus and aloe and lemon balm, especially they, just have that energy of like, take a breath, <laughs> calm down, cool. Um, so that's why I called it cool kid. And then the lime and the grapefruit are just like a little bit of set citrus that I think just really makes it smell nice. And it just gives it that like freshness. So yeah, that's one I literally use. I use it like every day in some capacity in either skincare or hair care or uh, before bed. Yeah. Love it. Like and then I also have Sorry, go ahead, Andy. I like the little symbol. Thanks. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It's like a little whale diving into the pool. And <laughs> um, yeah, this is oh, this is my probably my favorite product that I'm selling. Mm. Um, lemon balm elixir is probably what I like take the most out of the tinctures. But yeah, this I use like every day. I also have uh, raspberry lemon drop is what I called it. So this is also a hydrosol. So this is lemon balm. So it has also kind of that like cooling, um, and hydrate all pretty much all hydrosols are going to be hydrating. So they're great for the skin. Um, and this one also has red raspberry leaf, which is an astringent. So it has some really gentle, like toning properties. So probably not so much guys, but I know a lot of girls like to use toners to kind of like shrink the pores and ha kind of have that like tightening effect on the skin. Um, and there's, there's a lot of chemicals in a lot of, um, you know, like grocery store toners that can really like sting and just be like really harsh on the skin. Um, so this is going to be a lot more gentle, but it does have that kind of like astringent, uh, tightening property because hmm. like raspberry leaf. So those are the hydrosols. Um, yeah, I'll probably be making more, but these are the and, two. That and these you would spray on yourself. Yeah, you can spray um, like your skin, like my skincare routine. I just did like a little Instagram um, thing the other 
week or day. Um, my skincare routine is like, oh my God, so simple compared to, I don't know, five, 10 years ago. I was like using all these stupid, fancy, expensive products and my skin was getting irritated and it just, you know, it was a whole thing. Um, and now I pretty much will just do a hydrosol for hydration and then I'll go over top of, of it with a moisturizer, um, usually like a tallow balm. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's a great thing to use like underneath moisturizer. Cause then you can, the moisturizer will kind of like lock in the hydrosol and lock in like the hydrating properties. Whereas if you're just rubbing, say you're rubbing like coconut oil or something on your skin, you're kind of creating a barrier. So what you would want to do is do like the hydrosol, get the hydration and then do that barrier on top to kind of like let it soak in. Um, but you can also, it's great for like your your scalp if you get like dry or irritated scalp um you can mix like i mix it into my my whole like clay cleanser routine with my hair i'll spritz it on my hair just for like kind of like a little hydration and stuff in between washes um yeah you can diffuse it if you just want like the smell um so many different uses yeah i i i have like eczema you know in oh yeah That'd be, it'd be amazing for that. But I do, I would, I wouldn't do the astringent one as like my first pick. I would do something that's more like soothing. Um, So like the aloe in this would be amazing for anybody with eczema or like dry skin, uh, irritated skin. Hmm. Yeah. Eucalyptus and aloe is an amazing combo. Okay. So that's the hydrosols. And then lastly, I have the flower S. Essences. So flower essences are kind of like a whole different, I guess, like subgenre in herbalism. So everything I've talked about so far, we're talking about like documented medicinal <laughs> products or documented medicinal like effects, results, that kind of thing. Um, flower essences are energy medicine. So um, I have two. I have my sun, uh, sun prayer flower essence. And I, I think I gifted, I can't remember which ones I gifted when I was kind of like testing some of these out. Um, so this one actually has five different flowers. And basically the idea is that in a lot of sort of, uh, in a lot of ancestral traditions and cultures, like water is believed to hold energy so um this is basically taking energy not taking but like um transferring energy from a plant in this case flowers flower essence um harnessing it in water um and ideally like under sunlight or some people can do moonlight as well it's kind of a different thing um and yeah and then you you cut it with alcohol and you have this really potent energy medicine. You literally only are supposed to take like a few drops at a time because it's believed to be that potent. So it's not like a tincture where you want to take like a dropper full <laughs> or two dropper fulls. Um, so these last forever. And I mean, you can use them however you want, but I think a lot of people can really benefit from using them kind of in like a ritualistic way. So whether that be as like part of a yoga practice or, you know, maybe before a meditation, um, dream work. So my other one, so this is sun, sun prayer, um, which has five different flowers. And I kind of put like some information about the, the sort of energy of the plants. Um, yeah, I think they're, I think this is a really amazing medicine for sort of like everything this sun represents right like it's uplifting it's joyful it's um peaceful and then and I have my ocean dream flower essence and this is one that I actually like to take before bed hmm. um for dream work that's probably why I called it ocean dream um because it has more of like a like creative sort of sacral chakra type of flow energy to it um, but again, it just kind of depends on like how you want to use it and what sort of rituals you do, if any. Um, it's all about like intention with energy medicine. 
Um, and I think like the people that these products are for, the flower essences, like, you know, if this is your type of thing, like some people are like, no, I just want like the medicinal stuff, <laughs> you know, um, the people who are going to benefit from a flower essence, I think their intuition is going to guide them in terms of like how to use it. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then lastly, I have to tell you about Etsy being annoying uh, and being, I think I already told Kenny about this. So I launched this thing, right? And I'm like, yeah, my Etsy podcast live, everybody like go shop. And within not even 24 hours, they pulled multiple of my listings for medical misinformation. (laughs) Oh my fucking God. Yeah. So that's in a whole thing. I've actually sold more on Instagram, like directly, uh, than Etsy. So yeah, if anybody listening wants to help me with Etsy algorithm and purchase on there and leave a review, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, I knew this was a risk because I have multiple herbalist friends who this has already happened to. Um, as somebody like selling a product and marketing a product, you would think that it would be wise to like describe your product and what it does and what its properties are. So like in the Etsy description, you know, we tend to put and accurate information. Um, I was pretty careful not to be like, this is going to cure cancer or like anything like that. Right. Um, you know, a lot of us are really purposeful about using language like you know, echinacea supports the body's natural ability to fight the flu, um, stuff, stuff like that. Right. Which is, which is both true. And it also is a little bit of a softer way to, you know, saying it in terms of like legality and all of this stuff. But yeah, Etsy has been like pulling a lot of herbalists products, um, for whatever language is like triggered in their algorithm. So I had a whole bunch of my stuff taken down Um, and it's only now back up, like some of these products have, I've only just gotten them back up with kind of like a more limited description in the actual text. Um, I always put the copy of the label in the pictures so that, I mean, you, everything that all the information that you need is on the label. Um, so yeah, it's very frustrating because you, you can't really give like a very in-depth description of your product Mm -hmm. unless you want to risk your shit pulled down and then like you know it's like a youtube youtube algorithm like yeah it, like i don't think people are seeing my stuff because mm-hmm. i'm really not yeah so far it's, it's honestly been kind of a flop and a part of me is like oh should i just have done like a different style of marketing i don't really i'm not really ready to like invest in my own website yet um so yeah that's been frustrating but i'm kind of learning the ropes in terms of how to avoid it like or how to minimize the risk of having stuff pulled but it's a stupid algorithm that you know you can't really understand fully so we're but we're seeing everything there but they're not letting you everything's up now okay okay yeah everything's back up there so everything i've talked about you can buy on etsy um and yeah it would be super helpful like i part of why i chose to do it on etsy is because when people can then leave reviews you know, it creates like a place where people can go say, Oh, okay. Other people like this product. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, a lot of people have bought stuff from me just through Instagram marketing and then just little like direct, you know, direct payment, um, which is awesome. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm very grateful for those people, especially with this listing getting pulled issues. Um, but in terms of like scaling it at all, it's, it, it's a little difficult because there's nowhere for them to leave a review and there's, it's just, you know, it's not really feasible for the long term. Yeah. Um, do you think, are you now thinking that you're going to have to find a different way to, uh, put your stuff out there? Not, not yet. Um, I mean, I'm still like, I'm st- I just, just still feel like I'm in the very, very beginning stages. Yeah. I mean, I haven't even sold enough products to cover like, you know, all of the packaging and bottles and materials that I've bought. So, you know, until I at least break even with that stuff, I'm not ready to like think about 
getting my own website or yeah. So I'm just kind of learning how to, how to deal with the Etsy stuff. And then, you know, maybe in a couple months or six months or something, I'll kind of see where I'm at. And if it's something that I want to keep doing, then yeah, I'm like, I know I could, I could make my own website and um, figure that out. A lot of people use Shopify and stuff, but yeah, it is just various. It was a very like, oh, right. Like fourth industrial revolution has its little pause in like every corner of our lives like yeah, yeah. Can't escape it and yeah i mean it there's even if you have your own website like technically your server could get you know so there's there's so many levels of it but for right now i think um yeah i'm just gonna kind of be using like the images and the label to provide the majority of the information because yeah it's a waste of my time and energy and money to um put stuff like lemon bumps neuroprotective and then have them be like it's a lie it's just, it's just crazy too because like etsy markets itself as being like all for mm-hmm. you know like people making handcrafted products at home small business owners you know part-time projects passion projects like that's their whole thing and it's such a lie because they don't actually support that and then it's also just crazy because the whole supplement industry is unregulated. So people can say whatever they want. So like the idea that me saying lemon balm is neuroprotective, which is a documented fact, um, is so like, just so, I don't know, innocent compared to some of the claims that these industrial supplement companies make um, yeah. when they're hacking their shit with, with like chemicals and fillers and they're putting, you know, when something says like, um, uh, like natural flavor, like that could be anything, anything. Like there's no legal <laughs> transparency or like accountability. So, sure. yeah, it's obviously a double standard. But yeah. Well, I can. So, and and I don't know if you want to include this, you know, in the final cut. But do you have to have a business uh, structure for this, or how does that work? What do you mean a business structure? Like, like, LLC. like yeah, LLC or business license or, you know, how do you? Yeah, I, I started an LLC for it. Um, I don't know if can you legally sell products without that. I don't know. But I did just because I think it's it's intelligent. I mean, it costs a little bit of money, but I don't think it's not that I have like great assets to if anyone were to sue me, but it is it's a very I kind of learned like through becoming a yoga teacher a little bit more about like the whole LLC business stuff and sort of separating your business finances from your personal finances just for that added layer of protection. I think at the level I'm at, it's very unlikely that, um, you know, somebody's going to try to like sue me, but you know, you just never know. So you've got to protect yourself. You never know if uh, Kim Kardashian will take, you know, the product and then suddenly you blow up. <laughs> That would be great. That would blow it up. Well, congratulations on this on everything you've done so far. I think your stuff looks great, and I really think it shows. Uh, it's got a definite style to it, which I, I think is is really cool. Thank you. Yeah, fun. I really enjoy it. So I, it's it's very exciting to like actually be able to yeah like offer offer these products to anybody who wants them. Yeah, and the fact that it was something. I mean. It's just cool to hear a story that goes from you creating your own, essentially, medicine cabinet and uh, also sort of what's a body shop kind of product thing for yourself. And you're yes. just taking that, taking stuff that you make for yourself and you're yeah. saying, okay, well, here, I'm going to sell it and see if somebody wants it. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say that, um, you know, it's beautiful to see you pursue something with so much integrity and, yep. and honesty because you know we know you <laughs> you know we you know what you stand for and and i think it's beautiful you know and because often like i'm so cynical about everything you know <laughs> because i don't know the people who are making things um, but you know obviously you know it's, it's it's beautiful and i'm excited for you and hoping great things for, for you thank you yeah it's been very it's been very cool and like you know, there's a lot of people who who have helped me and supported me and like other herbalists, like, you know, when I sort of like officially launched it, um, which has only been a couple of weeks. 
um, you know, like people sharing it and just like, I don't know, kind of generating enthusiasm around it, which like, I don't know, it's just so, so cool. Like even if people don't buy products, like to have like other herbalists being like, yeah, like you should go, you should go get your lemon balm from Jess. Like, mm. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's so, it's so humbling and just yeah. nice. Yeah, I love, I love the herbalist community and that seems like it just keeps growing, which is really cool. Cause yeah, I think this type of practice and knowledge needs to be continued like now more than ever. Yeah. And you've got a few more things in the pipeline as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm never, uh, I'm, ne- I'm never bored. Yeah. And I also think it's just cool that you just put it into, into action and made it and manifested it. So that's really, mm-hmm. that's great. Um, you know, it's, what's one thing to say, oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'd like to try this, but you're, you're going ahead and, and just doing it and learning by doing, um, that really is something that we all need to kind of do if we have an idea is a lot of it, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, things that stop us are not time. It's just our own doubts. And I feel like you've just kind of overcome that. And I think that's great. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and also just great to see you, Jessica. I know. Yeah, I've missed you. <laughs> this is um, kind of probably nice after like a couple of weeks of school violence in Israel, Palestine, and. <laughs> <laughs> well, I there's an episode the with me and Hema where we talk a little about our relationship, which I would think was really nice. So that's that'll be coming out. Um, um, yeah, and this one we, we did with Kenny and the and about science is coming out too. So. That's a that's a fun episode, um, but uh, it's good to just have you back. Thank you, Jessica. So um, that does it for this week's episode. What's left is a weekly political podcast challenging the mainstream left, um, and also a, a podcast that helps uh, people find out about products that will help them make them feel better. Um, and, and, and as it turns out, from um, our uh, what's left. Uh, person jessica um, we finally have a sponsor we finally got a sponsor guys this episode is sponsored by we folks <laughs> right exactly <laughs> we post information about our topics and our guests on the episode notes wherever you found this episode or on our blog at what's left podcast.com you can find past episodes to this podcast channel there and connect with us i remind people if you fancy anything you heard here please subscribe rate review or turn on your notifications to any of our eight platforms on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, YouTube, and Telegram. And if you'd like to give us feedback about something you've heard or suggest something for us to cover, contact us through our blog. Please definitely check out um, Jessica's uh, Etsy or Instagram website and take a look at her products. The, wait, it's coming, the holiday season's coming around. It is, yeah. So it's, a perfect, it's a perfect thing for, you know, give somebody. Um, and, um, that's it for this week. We'll, well, me and Kenny, uh, we'll see you next week, but, uh, Jessica is going to be just going to have to get your, your fill today. All right. See y'all next week. <laughs>